is Katie, and this is Classically Black Podcast. Where we talk all things classical music and being black in the profession. With track beats playing in the background. Hey. Hey, girl. So. What you mean, so? <laughs> Life is in flux. Right, the semester's coming to an end. Hopefully. Oh, my goodness. I'm still here. Wow. Let's just get into the episode. Because I just, I'm just trying to disassociate myself until the end of the semester. Y'all gonna hear such a change in well actually maybe not because by the time an episode comes out where well, I'm not here, I don't know when it's gonna be. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, but like it's one thing to because you're gonna be in Rochester, but still like you ain't gotta go to that place. I'm, I'm really, still gonna be here yeah. near it. So <laughs> I don't know, I really like Eastman even though I've been getting on my nerves. Yeah. Not not overall. Not anything that's inherently Eastman's fault. Just like, but the building did nothing to me. <laughs> I was, I'll put it that way. <laughs> and my teacher is um, also off the hook. Mr. Taylor's perfect. <laughs> huh. I'm just. But one thing Eastman did did do. You saw I text you that you saw that um. So ge- generous, Uh-oh. Eastman. <laughs> yeah, I saw it and I was like, oh, okay. Um, Eastman <clears throat> is doing a benefit concert. For guess who? It's it's not for the kids in Flint who still don't have clean water all these years, or the people in Puerto Rico who have who still don't have any electricity, or um, any of the homeless people. Several several homeless people that are in Rochester. No, no, you guessed it for Notre Dame. <laughs> and I don't know, like I. I'm conflicted because it's like as a musical institution, we have to understand like how important Notre Dame is. Like it's, it's the birthplace of polyphony. Well, not really the birthplace, but like, you know, Leonin and Paratin. I was going to say, I used to call him Patron. That's how I remember his name <laughs> and their work that they did. The anonymous for like all of, all of this work at the Notre Dame is so important. Looking at Catholicism. We're looking at Gothic architecture. Like you're so annoying Delaney. Um, okay. architect and historian. Then we have to under we have to acknowledge the fact that Notre Dame is important. Notre Dame does not need any more money. They got over a billion down. dollars in, yeah. and like, the church is worth like three billion dollars. Like, and it's it They're just fine. It just makes me it makes me upset because it's like you're focused on the wrong thing. Like they there are students here here in Rochester here in Rochester that cannot afford their own instruments to go here. They have to borrow instruments from the school to to play here because the instrument that they own wasn't good enough. Me, that was literally me all of last year. <laughs> there are students here though who are thousands. I'm not talking about no little ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty. I'm talking about thousands of dollars in debt. Students who are thousands of dollars in debt. Mm-hmm. And I understand the politics of school. I don't. I don't completely understand that, but I understand that you must pay something. Mm-hmm. It's it's rare that. <clears throat> you're gonna get a full ride if you ever gotten a full ride like you're very lucky mm-hmm. congratulations but at least how eastman works and that's like the way that i've been talking i don't know exactly how eastman works so i don't work yeah, in eastman financial don't full, full but rides there. they said that they said that yeah. okay good I'll just, full ride. I'll just say that then i'll, I'll say it then you then. might get full tuition you're not gonna get a full ride you're not gonna get a full ride and even full tuition is pushing it exactly i'm not gonna say like i was i was being careful because all i know about financial aid is what i've talked to about other people and not like numbers but typically people just get half i mean as grad students that's the that's a typical thing that's going around like you get half and whatever like but i don't know how it works everybody's different especially in your playing based on a lot of things but they expect you to pay for something it's school especially grad school like you know what i'm saying but it's like do you have students here that need money Mm -hmm. (laughs) and and notre dame is not one of them people that need money Mm -hmm. and there's also people who who've already given that that you don't why do you to put on top of that mm-hmm. like why don't you just do like a memorial concert like in memoriam of notre dame but you're gonna raise money for them and your own students are suffering i have a problem with that Ooh. and it's like everybody know i stand east man and i'm not just saying this because i'm on my way out but who gonna stop me you already you already got my money all right and money for years and years and years to come but I got that off my chest. I have a problem with that. Yeah. And then you, the USA gonna stand up and be like, we gonna donate some money. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all go. <gonna, laughs> like the US should be the, 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 the main people sitting down. The US. 
I mean, at this point, honestly, I was just thinking about the mess that we're in and so many different facets of the word, like just financially, politically, racially. And I was just like, throw the whole country. Throw the whole country. The whole thing. Because I was just thinking about like the state of black people in this country, the generational trauma that we will not see the end of for decades to come. If if that. If that. And I was just like. (laughs) You might have just wipe Thanos. Thanos. (laughs) The whole country is... I was like, just throw it all away. The country's built on racism. And before y'all start piping up, why don't y'all just go somewhere? I'm I'm stuck here. I am an American, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> like, this country's built on racism. I mean, like, yeah, anti-blackness is, like, it's global. global. Yeah. But, like, this country was built on anti-blackness. Like, so it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit different here. Right. Like, I don't know how we're getting out of this one. That ugly flag in that ridiculous song that y'all like so much just throw it all away and it's Make always my skin crawl <laughs> it's always awkward because like when i substitute teach I'll, i haven't done it in a while because school but i used to substitute teach a lot and the kids will always be like uh miss brown why you not saying the pledge i'll just be like i just never answer pledge my allegiance to the flag of the united states of america first of all united states when are we gonna give that name up <laughs> like, i forgot the rest of it what's the rest of it and to the republic it's literally it's, it's literally lie after lie God. after lie <laughs> after, i'm like y'all really make a little kid say that i wish the hell my kids would say that pledge that's why y'all grow up that way see the kids that like the pledge they're so used to lying so <laughs> people probably like dang <laughs> it's just that mor- it's a combination of all this stuff is true plus morale is low i mean like r- so are we saying like, it with no nuance yes like we, yeah. could, we could nuance it a little bit but like for what like the whole pledge I pledge allegiance. First of all, my grandma be like, the only thing I should pledge allegiance to is God. <laughs> I pledge okay, allegiance. skipping right to the one nation under God. <laughs> right. That's the only part my I grandma like. Under God. <laughs> but then like, what about people who don't believe in God? Mm-hmm. Right. In, in a country like America, <laughs> where like different people come from different places. How are you going to have one country under God? It doesn't work that way in America. When you got people coming, not even like, even if you like t- take away like, people who don't believe in god it still doesn't work right. you cannot have it doesn't it, it, it that's not how the Pledge of, the fly. of the united states of america imagine. and to the republic for which it stands stands for what <laughs> <laughs> one nation under god indivisible literally been divided <laughs> <laughs> started <laughs> off divided <laughs> <laughs> with and Never then, been oh, well, wait my favorite part my favorite part with liberty and justice <laughs> What a joke. That's a punchline. Oh my God. Who wrote that? Who wrote that? Dave Chappelle? Who, who did it? Girl. What a comedian. He funny. But low key, maybe it's like some Kevin Hart. No, Kevin Hart doesn't have like that. Like it doesn't have, he doesn't have like intellectual humor. Hmm. Who was, who would be someone? Maybe Dave Chappelle will be. Mm-hmm. It literally sounds like a satire. <laughs> the, the, the Pledge of Allegiance is like a satire on America. Variations on a theme. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance for this country. I'd rather lay down and die. <laughs> <laughs> your hand over your heart. Yo, let's move on. <laughs> it's comical. I seen that drunk that drunk on Twitter. I'd rather I serve crack for I serve this country. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> Man, this country ain't never bouncing back. Well, maybe. And I remember no, so- but at the rate at the rate that the planet is dying, then I don't think so. <laughs> and that's another thing. <laughs> People do not People- tune in for this. People go right and be like, "Are y'all okay? <laughs> We're great. Just woke." <laughs> Oh, being woke is the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. You can't enjoy nothing. You can't. That one thing. Everything is like, well, actually, systemically. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. I can't do nothing. Like, I got to turn my brain off if I want to enjoy things. It, it, enjoy anything. Yeah, this country is literally. <sighs> it's just ironic that our, that y'all's president called it called other countries shithole countries. That is ironic. What's my mom used to say? My mom used to say, uh, that's the pot called the kettle black. I mean, or white, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> yeah, let's move on before I say something that. <laughs> no. I mean, okay, this to round it out a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> I had this conversation with my teacher. I understand that this is one of the only countries where, like, 
if you not the only country, but one of them, if you if you work hard and the stars are aligned, you could get somewhere. My my family came here with nothing, you know. So it's like, yeah. Also, the, your career as a musician, it works. It works here. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's some stuff America has to offer besides McDonald's. Oh, you can get McDonald's in other countries too. Mm. Oh yeah, and then they don't and usually better. Usually better. Oh. Um, yeah, some one of them got garlic fries. I was like, "What?" I, I tried, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this country trash. We ain't even got garlic fries at McDonald's over here. <laughs> I tried. I did. All right. Well, <laughs> moving on to the news. So Sterling Elliott's at it again. At it again. Again. After he. Ju- he takes first place, first of all, of course. Of course. First of all, why y'all even have him play? Y'all should have seen him walk in and be like, well. I don't, and then like, why? Yeah, even when you announced it, just be like, Sterling Elliott played this, and we'll just assume that it was first right. place. Duh. Duh. <laughs> Doy. <laughs> Goofy. <laughs> Silly goose. <laughs> I didn't even say the name of the competition. It was, it was. <laughs> oh, um, shoot. It was a young artist competition. Um, he took uh, first place, obviously. Um, this was a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was held at the Mondavi Center on April 26th and 27th. He uh, was awarded $10,000, um, which is the Founder's Prize, which, first of all, it, let me just read this part. It says, Elliot, 19, has soloed with the New York Philharmonic, the Cleveland Orchestra, Virginia Symphony Orchestra, the Hilton Head Symphony Orchestra, the South Bend Symphony Orchestra, the New World Symphony, the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra, the San Francisco Chamber Orchestra, and others. First of all, that alone. Why do y'all even have him play? First of all, if I was competing. professional. I'll be pissed. (laughs) Young artist. New York Philharmonic. Cleveland Orchestra. Buffalo I'm mad you look at you. I'm mad you look at you. It's so annoying. It's so though. many of them. I can't. And then, of course, of course, he's been on front of the top. And, of course, earlier this year, he he took home Sphinx. The, the, the audience choice and in first place. You know what? It's probably like, there's probably several others. Not and others. It's probably like a, a very large number of others. And just to save ink, they were like, all right, we'll just take the first 10. And then we'll have to say and others. Right. To his I press just, secretary. I just... If I if I was in the warm up room and I saw Sterling walk in, I'd just be like, "Why?" Well, just start loosening my bow immediately. Well, I wouldn't because that means I have to. Re- I'll be trying to go for second. Um, I mean, unless actually, they give him all the places. Oh shoot! Because like if he plays three movements, then <laughs> I mean, first, second, third place. That's true, but like and then a cadenza, honorable mention. So, but you know what? If I saw Sterling Elliott in a competition, it would like kind of take the pressure off me. Could be like, I know I ain't getting first. <laughs> So I could just give that up. Yeah, I could. It's like less pressure. It's like let me go for second. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and I wouldn't be mad about it. I'd be like, yeah, they go to home. You're right there. I mean, That's what's up. So I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't really say that he competed in this competition. I'd say that he attended it to collect his prize. Yeah, yeah. He just wants to pick it up. Did he even play? This he, right? He played. Oh, yeah, or maybe for like. So. Maybe to say that he played. Right. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe they were just like, we're just going to, can you come collect it? But just play a little something on stage. Yeah, little, just, you know, so people don't get mad. Play the exposition. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Or, or a scale or anything. Really. <laughs> you know. Just play open strings. Just right. So you can just get, get a feel. Oh, you of the just hall. go get up there and tune. Yeah. And that's really all we need. Just get a feel of the hall. Yeah. So you, <laughs> let us know if you have any suggestions as well. <laughs> Want to play with the, the little leaflets on top of, what are those called? I don't know. Mm-hmm. The roof. Oh, what's next one? Um, um the the Berkeley Symphony in Berkeley, California. Um, they just announced um a new conductor slash music director, Joseph Young. Come on, okay. Um, he's a graduate of Peabody. Um, Peabody. Right. Isn't that what it's supposed? To, some girl tried to tell me it was Peabody. Someone, <laughs> I'm like, I was like, girl, that even sound right to you? Let us know, Peabody. <laughs> P- yeah, Peabody. I'm like, I might look stupid. Do I look stupid? No. <laughs> you look stupid saying Peabody. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't care what they call it. I'm calling it Peabody. For real. Because letters have meaning. <laughs> Peabody. Peabody. Okay. Peabody Somebody- <laughs> conserved for three. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody let us know. Peabody. Okay, me going. Me going to the doctor. Tell me my body hurts. <laughs> doctor. Having bitty pains. 
See, it doesn't work. See how that doesn't work. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, this poor man. He's <laughs> just like I just wanted to hear my shout out. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, he's a graduate of Peabody Conservatory, <laughs> um, and the University of South Carolina. Um, he's currently resident conductor at the USA National Youth Orchestra. Okay. And he was the former Come assistant conductor at the Atlanta Symphony. So, he, so right. I just don't understand why y'all even be. What I might as well just not even have a resume at this point. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going. What am I gonna put on it? Exactly. The, y'all, now my, my little my little degree little mean nothing to y'all. Now. <laughs> Atlanta Symphony. You was what? Okay. So um, go off, Black King. Right, exactly. Come on, oh, Black King. So Black King coming at you at Berkeley Symphony. Go on ahead and um attend his first concert and all the ones after that. Um, uh, it doesn't have a start date, but I'm sure whenever their season starts. I don't know. I forget how orchestral seasons work. September ish yeah in september to uh, midway mm-hmm. or june i don't know how cso gonna work that out uh, they gonna make up <clears throat> at this point they're gonna be playing for a little minute <laughs> right i can't remember they didn't push back so now they ain't remember in december <laughs> <laughs> so they gotta make up for everything okay insurance cracking because you're playing outside at Ravinia. Okay, well in november as far as that dang i wonder what they gonna i'm curious about that yeah because i know the people got their money back but like oh maybe they just gonna let it go dang gonna have to they're gonna have to let it go because how you gonna make up all them concerts and they gotta prepare for Ravinia even though I yeah and then that's gonna mess with the contract even though I do know I don't think everybody play for Ravinia so if they really want to be petty they could be they could just oh yeah maybe they might get some compliment I don't know because I don't think I'm pretty sure the whole orchestra don't it'd be like a lot of subs during the summer because one of those people go teach and stuff and people been playing all year they don't want to play I remember one of the um one of the viola showed me her little her, her schedule you know one of them live down the street from me i said that already so katie got money i don't have money yeah, we already heard how much you see us something made. anyway um <clears throat> katie's mad katie lives inside the bean <laughs> that's not <laughs> first of all it probably stinks i don't know people rubbing on it it had to have skipped through by now <laughs> um but but then again like people go to see the chicago symphony then then go to see so so hmm. I don't know. All right. Well, we got for intermission. I can't believe the intro started off that way. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to be celebrating our last episode with you, sister. Right. Stay tuned for July fourth episode. <laughs> it's gonna be a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> Thought this was bad. <laughs> Okay, y'all. So if you didn't know, now you know it's Teacher Appreciation Week. So, um, we've already talked about the made a good point. We already talked a lot about like how much we stand our teachers and blase blase. So for intermission this week, I wanna know what was what is you you're new to teaching. Well not like new to like interacting with kids. Like you've mm-hmm. done like Yola Camp and stuff like that, but like teaching, what is your favorite or most hilarious teaching moment so i was where were we playing oh the in the hall of the mountain king arrangement or whatever so it got a stringendo at the end it says stringendo alfine so i'm up there i'm like conducting or whatever so we're we talking up there. So hey, we talk- maestro <laughs> you literally got a thing right there that say maestro that's different because that's your okay no it's not it's still the same word and you conduct more than me and longer. Can you finish? I was trying I to. You, I <laughs> knew you were going to say that. Um, so I'm up there. So, I, so of course, we, we going over the meeting of Stringent and Alfine. And some of the kids, like, obviously know it, so I'm not going to tell them. So some, like, half, some people know what Stringent means. Some people mean, know what Alfine means. So they're like, oh, Stringent means speed up. I said, yeah, what Alfine mean? And they were like, oh, Alfine means, uh, like, the end. Like, so I was like, yeah, it's a speed up to the end. And this one girl, <laughs> he said, so why they ain't just say speed up to the end? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's a good question. <laughs> kids be so fun. That's what I'm thinking. Like, yeah, like some people, like, you know, our friend just don't like kids. Like, he'd be like, ugh. But, like, kids are hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like, they just, like, so, some most times. Really, yeah. So. I don't care for them either. Yeah, but, like, yeah. the ones that are, that are yeah. good. Yeah. All, all kids are good. But, like, the ones that are 
you know. Yeah. You know what I mean. You know what I'm yeah. trying to say. Okay. I'm trying to think of. Um, okay. So basically at our job, I was conducted one day. This one Delaney was like coming the same day. <laughs> Um, but you know what? I think for morale and how like the semester been going, it's actually probably the best that we stopped going on the same day because we was gonna we would just now we roasting kids. So <laughs> <laughs> they were like, everybody put your instruments down and turn and look at so and so. Terrible. So this one little boy, I don't even remember the context because the, it's actually the funniest thing wasn't even the kid; it was Delaney. So Delaney in the back of the room with the bases. I'm conducting something. I asked a question. Okay, maestro. What did she say to me? That was it. No. I don't remember. So keep going. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so the little boy was like. Conducty wufty. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> so the little boy says. Was it little boy, I said something to the little boy. He was like. No. I said something to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And she was like. Oh, Miss Brown about to bust the cap. Yo. And I was. I looked at him. And then Delaney was like, oh, and that <laughs> sent me because I'm used to ignoring kids that say inappropriate things. Like I'm used to not laughing. Like mm-hmm. I've conditioned myself to be like, that's inappropriate, uh-huh. whatever. But that sent me. Because even worse was the eye contact afterwards because I realized what I had done. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a pussy cap and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so now me and Kate look at each other from across the room because I'm a teacher. I'm not supposed to be. <gasps> <laughs> like, like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> like, it was, it was certainly because I didn't even think it was that funny. Because, like, why he's, you know, he's probably, oh, I think he's not nine. He's like eleven, mm. you know. So, so why do you even know? Yeah. Even if he doesn't know what it means, because he probably doesn't. Mm-hmm. It's like, why would you? Why? Who's around you saying that kind of stuff? You know. And let's maybe to be fair, maybe he heard it in a movie or something. Yeah, Let's hopefully, let's hope hopefully, let's hope that yeah. he heard it in a movie. You have like a favorite teacher moment, like maybe something that like made you feel like okay, like this feels good or like oh mm. yeah. I mean, I did have one where you know every now and then our job gets like like kids don't usually get private lessons, <clears> but um sometimes they do, and I give a lesson and then our boss texted me and was like oh he asked for another one he really enjoyed it I was like. So I was like, all right, and then this is one of the students said, you know, I like me a good, quiet kid that listens. So, <laughs> good luck. Can't talk. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not saying don't talk to me, but I'm also very like, I'm not gonna pretend to have nothing in common with you. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm not very like when people put on their baby voice and they're like, what you do? Oh, I like princesses no. too. I don't. So wow. I'm not gonna lie to your face. You can talk to kids normally. Yeah. Be like, <laughs> and what did you do today? Right. And Especially if, like I'm 13. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Like, Ugh. kids be looking at you like, yeah, that's why I don't mess with y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can form full sentences. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> even, like, even, like, little kids, like, you know, there's a little, little one in, in the orchestra, you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. And, and she, her sister's older, mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about? I think so. A little cute one. And I talk to her like she's normal. Mm-hmm. And she be, man, she's so cute. Miss Brown, guess what I did today? I'm like, what you do, sweetheart? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but what about you? Um. Okay. So when I taught public school, I got there and I'm like, I'm about to push these kids. Like we have a competition. I'm like, let's see what they could do. And the thing with kids is like, if, if you show me you could do something, I'm just gonna amp it up. That's why some of these method books make me so mad. Like I did the, I told you I was doing a curriculum analysis with Danny on essential elements. I told you this already, and essential elements first of all like more than halfway through the book they introduced um piano and forte why kids kids learn inside outside voices at the age of three two why are you introducing a concept so simple at the end of the book pedagogical master you y'all hear this you know what i'm excited for i can't wait for our first live show because i feel people think i'm crazy i feel like people don't know what you actually be doing so i'm just so excited so <clears throat> i get to my seventh eighth grade orchestra and i give them like <clears throat> a level 3.5 piece of are you done? a level 3.5 piece for what? of 1812 is like it's dummy hard mm-hmm. or whatever and everybody's stressed you know like when i'm rehearsing i'm like 
dude, oh, I'm like, oh my God, I just turned into a different person. So everyone's on edge because they had competition the next day. It was like Friday, Friday afternoon. So we ran through 1812 and it sounded so good. And it wasn't, it wasn't, sound, it didn't sound so good. Like um, everything was perfect. Everything was perfectly in tune. It was just confident. They played out they, and they did what I asked them to do. Like, that's all I want. I just wanted to be confident. And I was like, I was so proud. I'm like, just play it like that tomorrow. That's all I ask. It's just, just play it like that. And they're like, we're nervous. I'm like, no, 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 just play it like that. It was like, if like one of the most amazing experiences ever. And I mean, like they kind of, they kind of blew it a little bit because they were so nervous. Mm-hmm. And then I was, <laughs> I felt bad because this is not how I get spoken to, but I know what you could, I know how you could play it. And I, I, I approach, I think orchestra is different because it's like, you're not playing by yourself. Mm-hmm. I understand getting nervous in orchestra, mm-hmm. but like, no, nah, so I'm nervous in orchestra unless it's like a really small orchestra where it's like we are we out here. I've gotten nervous in orchestra when it's like a viola. This doesn't happen anymore, but like when I used to play like really, really terribly out of tune, when it's a viola solely, you can it's sticking out, yeah. you know. Yeah. <clears throat> but like now I'm like not really anymore, and I was like y'all, are, you, I'm like you are not allowed to play like that. You are not allowed to just play whatever because you're nervous. Like I'm up there with you as well. You must, you must play better. And like, they played the, the concert and it went like really, really well. But I'm like, yeah, I'm, that's why people be coming to my class and be like, ooh. And I don't care. Like before y'all <laughs> start, whatever, like our boss be in the back of the room when I say whatever. I, I said something. I'm I mean, like. He also said whatever. So. <laughs> All three of us. I was in there like, because they, they said, I'm like, I don't know why y'all try me. I said that daily. Because I'm like I don't know why y'all think I'm the one to try and I don't understand why and a lot of teachers think you gotta be the nicest sweetest little piece of pie for kids to like you I'm you like p- kids love you kids, and kids uh, a little girl came up to me the other day hi Mr. Lady gave me a hug like Aww, <laughs> like you don't have to like you they wanna be but she also know I'm not the one so <laughs> like, I don't I'm like I don't know why y'all keep trying me <laughs> and I'm like I will hurt your feelings <laughs> he was standing right the our boss was standing right there he was like and I was like which one of us is gonna say it? I'm, I will hurt your feelings. <laughs> you know, I'm. But we'll, we'll what about it. what about me made you feel like I was the one? Exactly. <laughs> I'm like y'all what every day. I could be pulling up a chair. No, just tell me what, what was it? Because <laughs> you know, we I just told you about that. <laughs> what I did the other day, last night. <laughs> I mean, like we have we have this is coming later. This wasn't really petty. This is like like a mean thing because like every once in a while the the. the my rehearsals usually depending on the orchestra like if y'all just listen like when i taught my saturday morning orchestra last semester i had no problems i just i just taught that's it i didn't have to do anything else no discipline they their their parents dropped them off they unpacked nice and quiet but i don't i like personality though mm. like they did everything i was to do they played well it was fine i never told them to be quiet never told them to stop talking it was fine but like man something about like they get on my nerves but like <laughs> <laughs> so th- there's usually like a flux like I, I i tolerate it and then it's a dropping point where i i, I treat someone's life and then i have to build morale back up yeah. before. <laughs> that's usually how it goes so i freaking i was fine i said something to somebody and i find a one person that was like <laughs> and i'm like that was funny it was it was funny. So, I know exactly who you did this to, and this is Aww, a one person that you really should have. I, really, I felt so. Be- she is no. Ne- she never give no. Okay, problems. but you know what? She was talking to that other little girl. But that was her fault. She took. I don't care. She was talking to that other little girl after I told it. you to stop talking. She did That's not a thing. Mean it though, because I say, <laughs> I say, I'm speaking English. The what part you don't understand? So, so. I told her to stop talking in my rude Miss Brown way. That's like low key funny. Mm. So then she laughed. So I looked at her, I'm like, it's funny? It is? No, I'm asking a question. Is it funny? Why are you saying that? And, and, and it's low-key a rhetorical question. Like, mm-hmm. we both know yeah. it's rhetorical, but I want you to answer it. Yeah. That's so, the best thing ever when you, when you demand an answer for a rhetorical question. Like, nah. Because you because the rhetorical part is supposed to make you, like, you get it, you understand. Like, no, nah, I'm like, you got to say it out loud so you know how dumb you look. Or, Not her, because yeah. I, she was, she's literally okay, so Okay, but the, the boy I did it to the day before, he deserved it. <laughs> so like she i felt so and she's so small and cute i feel bad every time i see her to be honest like that was weeks ago but yeah like that's something i mean i don't understand why these kids keep trying me stop trying me Ugh. anyway let's move on 
Okay, so we're going to not spend too much time on this because we already talked about this so much. But teachers that, give me a teacher that you, oh, this is a new segment. Just in case y'all didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's Teacher Appreciation Week and we're talking about teaching stuff. Okay. Teaching stuff? Teaching stuff. Stuff. It's not stuff. 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 It's still, it's a silent F. Well, are we still doing the trifling moments? Okay. Yeah, that's later on. Okay, because I forgot my my first one that I said. I remember the one I said about the pizza. Cu- oh, it was the string. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, now I remember. Now, <laughs> yeah. y'all gonna be like, I don't want my kids in the classroom with this. Okay, but they sound good. So right, it's like so. it's like what you want, right? My kids in Danville, I was I was rude, <laughs> fine, but then they be all like, Miss Brown, you got me snacks, Miss Brown. <laughs> I remember one time my student Naraya. It don't matter now because you can't find her, but. My student Naraya, she came in. She was like, "Uh, Miss Brown, why you got an attitude today?" I'm like, "Because y'all, <laughs> y'all are the reason." Uh, you, she was like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Nah." <laughs> okay, tell me about a teacher that you appreciate and why. Teacher appreciation. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't want to. I mean, I'm not gonna narrow it down in terms of like. I only appreciate this person or I appreciate this person the most or whatever. But, um, let's see. I'll say I've talked about my, the teacher that I had from the beginning, um, of my bass playing time. Um, and then up until college, just because like, out of all the things that teachers have done for me, I literally like none of those things would have ever happened. Had it not been for this one teacher, Mm -hmm. you know, like literally, guiding me towards yeah. towards this because like <clears throat> when i said y'all had no idea what it what it took to get here i was like i first of all i didn't even know places like eastman existed mm-hmm. uh, until he was like yeah so he wrote down a list of like just all the regular schools cim eastman juilliard peabody 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 uh, <laughs> oh oberlin all those and he's just like yeah just look into it and i'm like i didn't know none of these things existed until <laughs> um nerves. except for like juilliard because yeah, yeah, yeah juilliard. but um yeah and just taking me there and not being like well she got a late start so and, and she don't know what you know what it takes so i mean whatever because i saw that a lot um when i was in the program that i was in i saw a lot of like people being like yeah i want to be a musician and then I didn't notice, of course, until I was, like, at Eastman because I knew, like, I had more of, like, a sense of reality of it. But, or actually, no, I noticed a little bit before that because I went to Interlock and it, and got my booty handed to me. Um, but I was just like, y'all got people that want to do this and have no idea what it takes. And teachers that have gone to these top schools and don't, like, tell them. Mm-hmm. So that's what, like, that's why I was really grateful to him for being like, nah, sis, you, you must do this, 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 and that mm-hmm. if you if you want to if you want to go there. What about you um well i've talked about mrs taylor so so much like on this podcast because i just can't i can't ever i don't think like okay yes there have been teachers who whatever have taken a chance on me have had a significant impact on my life you know the teacher that even introduced me to mrs taylor you know i wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for her suggestion because i wouldn't even think to go for a school like eastman you know so I mean, she definitely had an impact. Teachers who've helped me along the way, you know, like um, my teacher, Amy, who I was like, I just want help for my auditions. It's not, you know, it's not really easy to take in a student that already has rep and that's already been working on that rep and has already had teachers telling her stuff about that rep to teach them. Mm-hmm. It's not easy to do, you know, because it's like that rep is already ingrained in them. Now you got to teach somebody else's stuff. And she was like, yeah, and I, it's like, well, you could say like, I, and I, I really just don't think that she did it for the money i mean i had to pay her but i really just think that she was invested in me she saw that i really wanted something so she was like yeah let's do it mm-hmm. so but <clears throat> certainly no teacher has had like the effect that mr taylor has had and like we're in this p- transition period where it's like everybody's so excited to go everybody's like yo i can't wait to bust somebody jasmine's like how many more days we got it's all mine i still got a whole another year <laughs> jasmine jasmine sent me one week because she she sent me a message and she said this place and i that stuck out to me she, i was like this place jasmine and i it sent me because i was like all right but like I was telling them, like, everybody's so excited to leave. I'm like, I don't know about all that. Like, yeah, like, the, the work gets on my nerves. And like, because it's, like, so much work. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
the I think the music history courses are just dumb and I because they're they're rigorous I mean I'm also I you know what I'm not gonna say that because I'm a grad student it always like grad courses are supposed to be harder so whatever but I don't know Mr. Taylor has had such a profound impact on me because he don't put he's the first teacher to not put me in a box Mm -hmm. he's like whatever whatever you want to do he's like you I I ask you what you want to do and you tell me how hard are you want to work and that's that's always has been his thing and like the way he handles me the way that he the way that he knows how to talk to me the way that he encourages me I've I've grown so much as a violist was working with him like I will forever be indebted to him and it's not much that he he's really just doing his job but it's like extra lessons and always wanting to the, this commitment to like play it again and I didn't realize like how profound that was until like I talked to other te- other my colleagues who are like you could tell Mr. Taylor really takes a lot of time with you because my teacher would just be like yeah you'll figure it out and mm-hmm. Mr. Taylor's really like hands-on even as a as a master student which is like really not typical so I just I I can't say too much about Mr. Taylor like I just don't I'm low-key worried about leaving like it's like I know he's not dying and I'm not dying either like I get that but it's different <clears throat> there's a difference between me being in his studio and me hitting him up. Like mm-hmm. there's, there's, and everybody knows that. So it's like, I, I can't say enough. And even like when I first met him, the first time I played for him, <laughs> I played a C, the C major, uh, prelude at his viola thing. He was like, I have the recording. And he was like, wow. And I was like, nah, something's different about here. And it was just like, I don't, I just, I can never say enough about him. Like I don't deserve him. I've, I've said that before. I just don't. Well, he was like, "Nah, that was you at your recital." Yeah, when I said, "I don't know what I did to deserve," it, I didn't hear what he said back. But yeah, Richard said he was like, "No, nah, I saw you or something like that." I was like, <laughs> "Yeah," because I was like, "I don't know what I did to deserve a teacher like that." Like, I just, man, I Yo, could never say. Just... <sighs> anyway, I'm gonna leak the recordings. Can you imagine <laughs> people unsubscribing? You said yourself they went well. Okay, I didn't know how questionable the Bach went until he was like so the Bach and I was like okay you can relax really yeah I don't remember it maybe it was been too long for you forgot <laughs> did you get the recordings yet no I need to do that so I or I won't graduate because I need to send them to the other viola faculty because they couldn't make it oh yeah I should do I need to do that I, I to- <laughs> <laughs> well, let's actually pause the <laughs> podcast and I'm gonna do it today so I'm about to it's actually I actually wrote it down oh. so now I now I will do it but um yeah what were we talking about we were talking about like appreciating the teachers and you were talking about um mr taylor yeah and how much you appreciate him and then we started talking about your recital because you said you was indebted to him oh yeah i was yeah. like the prelude first of all the prelude i mean he said like it wasn't the most in tune you played and i'm like the prelude went really well to me in my recollection the, and normally what i recall you know, I can't hear intonation especially when it's up there uh, the, the, <laughs> the prelude from what i normally what i recall is usually how it went that's why i don't like recording myself i'm like but like and you're right or you remember it better and then the recording's worse and then that's the worst yeah. <laughs> i remember it going well so when he was like mm. but then he was like everything else was like superb and i was like yeah cause i felt good about that yeah. maybe the browns maybe the, maybe that third movement i was so happy to be done so anyway okay um one thing a teacher has said or done that was pivotal in your education well while we're on the topic of mr taylor that's not what i asked you Oh, he said it to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to say, um, it was it was a jury comment that I ridiculously didn't take to you too. I like it got stuck in my head at the time, but just when you get wrapped up in yeah. everything, like sometimes you remember, like you you didn't like you know you didn't take that advice as to heart as you should have for as long as you should have. Like mm-hmm. when you first happened, it was all stuck in my head. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna put this up in my practice room. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be whatever, whatever. Like, um, but we said he said um. What doesn't work needs information, and what does work needs trust. And I was like, <laughs> "Y'all write that profit. down." Like, I, and you know what? You're right because I low key forgot about. I forgot when you when I I said something to you, like a, a, two weeks ago. That quote, yeah. But I forgot the second part of it. Yeah. What, what does work, work needs trust. trust, and I'm like that. That person, Mr. Taylor, <laughs> 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 he he literally took the exact way like i know people have different learning styles but that is exactly how i learn like i i need like i know like information is a like a broad thing and like everyone's like yeah you need information whatever but like 
like I said, the practice journal and writing and dissecting things like the smallest things is what really works for me. Because if not, then my mind is just going to race. I'm gonna be like, this sounds bad. This sounds bad. Oh my God. This also sounds bad when I'm not thinking about like, why does it sound bad? Mm-hmm. What can I do physically to make it sound better? Right. Well, how do I even want it to sound, you know, like that sort of thing. And like having information is what, what literally like makes everything work for me. Mm-hmm. And then trust tr- that's exactly i bet you gonna put that on my jury program this year because in my jury this year i didn't trust that i knew my concerto so now i'm all uh, uh, um, mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, okay <laughs> what's the next uh whatever like and it was cl- like i could just be like how many times have i played this yeah you know like literally just trust yourself mm-hmm. and it's hard i mean cremate said this to me all the time he's like uh, play like you know how to play yeah and i've gotten into that like when i was at your recital i was like i was like i'm just gonna go out there and play because mm-hmm. like at the very least i know how how to play my instrument mm-hmm. like that's that's why i'm like it's never gonna be it's never gonna be completely like where i'm just you know right. lost in the middle of nowhere because right. at the end of the day i still i can maneuver around this instrument right like I, you know mm-hmm. but mr taylor out here you know spitting that knowledge he do got knowledge and he called me a roach but that's he it. literally didn't mr taylor has a story <laughs> i'm gonna tell you because you're not gonna have my teacher out here <laughs> so mr taylor has a story where he says say your house is infected with roaches infested with roaches so you call an exterminator um to get your roaches looked at which and you do and the exterminator comes and kills all the roaches but you see one little one hobbling limping along and you'd be like, all right, he on his way out. You just leave him alone. And then you decide to throw a dinner party, which is that's where you should have stopped. Because if your house is just infested with roaches, you should just let that giant air out <laughs> for a couple of years before you have a dinner party. Well, you know who would. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you saw one little roach still, you should not have had a dinner party. But anyway, sure. You decide to throw a dinner party. So all your friends come over, whatever, whatever. And your, your guests come and look at they plate and what do they see that one little roach on a plate so his idea behind this is the fact that that's how intonation is like you must kill every roach in intonation or it's gonna show up when you don't want it to show up like when you're under pressure when you playing that's the thing he did not call delaney a roach delaney is just annoying and has been saying this for the past year literally the past year (laughs) it's been a year since you've been saying since your jury comment last year and the fact this tale is so funny because he thinks everybody know his story like all he wrote was kill your roaches yeah <laughs> it's like so it's a good if i hadn't been friends with you i would never know what like, he meant what, by that what, was, what does that mean <laughs> he said no he said something like kill all the roaches and he said kill bad intonation always but i still wouldn't have made that connection yeah. to the I'm whole like, story <laughs> be wild and sometimes i ain't finna lie but um yeah i mean i have two um the first one would be the first one would be um my teacher christiana um i was in a lesson with her back in 20 um 2015 yeah back in 2015 and i was playing and she was like so what are your plans next year i'm my girl Mm -hmm. i'm probably gonna go back to evanston teach public school live my life get away from this place and she was like, I think you should go to Eastman. Cause I said, it said like, I'm thinking about going to grad school. Might go to Ohio state. I'm not sure yet. She's like, I think you should go to Eastman. And literally I, the type the type of person I am, it's like, I believe in myself to a certain extent, but I don't really be considering stuff. It's not like I don't have dreams for myself, but it's like, I don't know how to just explain. I won't explore things that I feel like ain't no way. Yeah. And it's, it's You're bad it's bad because it's like i remember i was talking to kaylin she was like i don't want you to limit yourself i'm like okay there's a difference between limiting and me trying out for the brilliant field what do you mean anyway so what do you mean anyway what do you i don't understand you don't understand okay maybe i'll tell you later so um she was like i think you should go to eastman and literally just like that i was like all right bet we going what we doing what we gotta do (laughs) and i just i it's not even, maybe it's not even about like people having dreams for me because I definitely like to dream big, but it's also like, you know, 
what someone believes like she she wouldn't have just said that for me to go up to eastman and look crazy you know like there must have been something that she saw to be like yeah she can go to eastman so when people believe in me like i really cling to that i'm like oh yeah i bet like we going to eastman just like um be like you sure you want to put your faith over here because <laughs> all right <laughs> But just like Dr. Culp, she was like, yeah, I think you should get a PhD. And I said, PhD? I ain't smart on it. But, like, I just take to stuff like that. And also what I said before, what Mr. Taylor said about um, tell me what you want to do and I ask you how much you want to work. So it's like the sky's the limit. You just got to work for it. And I think I think that's lost in this profession. Cause I feel like people think if you haven't been playing, um, if you haven't been playing your violin since you were covered in placenta, you won't make it. So. What's the next thing? <laughs> Wow. It's not true. It's not true. If you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm what? Delaney's trash. You don't have to. Delaney has a running list. You, of, put it, you put it on. It's on tape. It's on recording. That's why you got to write it down now. Delaney has a running list of things that I, that I said that she thinks are inappropriate. You wanna, not, y'all want to hear it? All right. Number one. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> um, okay, so we already did that one, so we'll skip that one. How about um give me a petty we, we moving off from the lovey dovey stuff. <laughs> Cause this is just we must share. Um give me a petty teacher moment or moments. That like for me. Let's start let's 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 Okay, let's make it a smoother transition. Something that your teacher has said that you'd be willing to share that was petty. Okay. Okay, so my teacher didn't say this to me. Because I've already, I've already shared that whole thing about the quarter tone. Which was so loud. <laughs> he was like... Cause... I didn't tell, like, the whole story behind that. So I'll tell that one, too. So I played it in a master class. And I was playing something in... I did a string crossing, but it was in thumb position. And the, the timbre... Of the, string crossings and thumb position is even more like obvious mm-hmm. and so the person was like well you, maybe you should try to go down the g- back down the g string or whatever and i read it for my teacher and he was like and i was like um and he asked why and i was like oh well he said that the timbre was like different and he was like well better there be a different t- timbre than your quarter tone sharp so what? <laughs> I was just like, dang. Wow. And he was like, and I'm your teacher, so. And I was just like, I wasn't arguing with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just telling you what he thought. I was just repeating. <laughs> Please, <laughs> hands up those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember in a studio class, there's a guy who, he played, his playing is very, like, in your face, very, not not in your face, like, obnoxious, but, like, he's very, um, it's very strong, like, mm-hmm. you know, and I admire that because that's not, that's something I don't have, um, but he was doing a lot of, I guess, like, some of his musical ideas were, like, a bit much, and it wasn't enough contrast. And so, why am I to go? <laughs> he was like, you know, I think that you have a lot of good musical ideas, but, you know, some of them are, you know, a bit much in terms of what you can pull off. I was like, <laughs> oh, shoot! <laughs> I was like, whoa! You know what I said? I told that somebody. They were like, "That doesn't seem very." Real. I was like, "Are you kidding? That doesn't seem very what?" That doesn't seem like that bad. Like, what? Are you? I was like, "What?" And then you can pull off, and he and emphasis on you. So exactly. not that anyone can it pull wasn't, off. It wasn't even like you know I like your musical ideas, but it might be too much, mm-hmm. or like it's like that you, <laughs> sir, can pull off. It wasn't to me. That's not even mean. It's just petty. I was just like, Shh. that's something that I, I would look at him and be like, "You good, <laughs> right?" <laughs> Ooh, Chile. I got two from Miss Taylor too. So the first one I think I've already said where I was playing the the hail story. Can I tell you like I haven't done anything. Like the lesson just started, you know what I'm saying? Morale is okay. You know, my lesson my recital coming up in like two weeks from, from then, but like, you know, everybody in the room feeling good. Like it's fine. You know what I'm saying? No no nothing's going on where like it, it felt like a net out of nowhere, you know what I'm saying? So I'm hanging out on the F natural, minding my business. And Miss Taylor go, she can't match your she can't match your sound if you sharp. And I was like, Are you okay? <laughs> it was a I was like I cause some was whatever Miss Taylor say petty stuff, but like that was a I was like, all right. And then one time in studio class, I was playing Bach, and you know I move a lot when I play. You know when it's time to perform for me, it's time to perform like 
what did I say that one time? I was like, this is the sinking ship, so <laughs> <laughs> might, might as well put on the show. <laughs> so I'm over there, I'm moving around, I'm doing the thing, whatever. Mr. Taylor, I get to the end, he's like, all right, whatever, beautiful. He was like, so I don't care what you feel. Um, <laughs> I need to be in soon. I was like, so. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I don't care what you feel. He said, oh, I don't care what you feel. <laughs> um, but you know what? Like, I feel like classical music lends itself to being petty. So what you teach now, what's some of your your favorite petty moments? So I just feel like <laughs> we've been over keys a minute. For, you know, for a while. Such such has this has F sharp, another one has F sharp C sharp, F sharp C sharp, G sharp. And so on and so forth. So we're playing a piece in, in A major and someone decides that they're going they they going to muscle up a, a, a G string. So I was like, you got to open G sharp string? <laughs> <laughs> Where they said all that? And the fact that you wrote it out. <laughs> because first of all, as a kid. So they're like, they're probably like, huh? A what? And you kept, you kept going. Talk about where they said them at. <laughs> I just don't. I mean, we've been over. I'm mean, because you know the kid. Like it's just, I don't know. Sometimes you gotta say it different ways because sometimes low one doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So you just gotta, you just gotta say it so they understand. Man, like when I get real, this is not really petty. It's kind of, it's kind of a lot. But you know, the same kids get on my nerves every week. So <clears throat> there's a there's a group of three. I tell you who they are after we turn these off and. They they be they cut they don't really cut up because they could be a lot worse they could be flinging I mean they already do that but they could be twirling their violins around the circle and getting up and walking around and and talking back to me and stuff like that first thing not gonna talk back to me but mm-hmm. they could be doing that kind of stuff and they don't they just talk to each other but I have a problem with that because I'm talking mm-hmm. and it's like I understand it's not really a dictatorship but I have information that I like to give you that's why I'm talking because mm-hmm. we could be playing that instead. you clearly need so so I'll say stuff like. If I get really annoyed, you know, it's halfway through the rehearsal, I'm really, I might be, I might, could be like, um, and that's why I need that, uh, that girl that's usually there, but I went to her show on Friday. Mm-hmm. That's why I need her because she serves as a, as a comic relief because if it's getting too <gasps> in there, <laughs> she'll say something to like lighten the mood, you know? <laughs> Cause I'll be like, why are y'all always talking? Like, I'll say something like, stop talking while I'm talking. And I'll be like, be the main ones who can't play. <laughs> And, you know, then the girl would be like, and, like, is there problems with that? Yeah, of course. Do I know they could play? They could play. You know, like, are there fundamental issues in their technique? Yeah. And, actually, one of the kids that that, that I would say that to, you know what I'm saying, like, I had a, a whole breakthrough moment with him in the beginning of the year when he was like, I can't get this right. I'm slow. And I'm like, who lied to you and said that you were slow? Mm-hmm. You're not slow. This is hard. Mm-hmm. Violence not easy. That's why I'm confused as to why you cut up in this class. Mm-hmm. Cut up in PE, please, <laughs> in, in language arts. <laughs> you can already speak English, but here, violin, hard. You cut up here. It doesn't make sense. But like petty, like you know, they do something because I I want to encourage them to read. That's a, a fundamental issue with the, with the way that music education is being taught and like how it's being taught. Period. It's like kids don't have a fundamental understanding of like how music works, and it's really in the pedagogy mm-hmm. because it's like. The, the thing with like playing an open G sharp, it's not even, okay, whatever. The fact that they don't hear the fact that it should be G sharp is is different because it's like oral skills can be challenging for a lot of people. And it's a, it's, it's a, it's a process, especially if they don't have a fundamental, you know, look at oral skills. But the problem I have is that you saw a sharp in front of that note and ignored it. Mm-hmm. You don't, you're illiterate. You don't know how to navigate this music and have a who someone failed you. Mm-hmm. And so now we got to come in the year after and try to figure all this stuff out. Y'all see all these symbols don't know what, what it means. You have no idea what it, at least my kids in Danville, when I got to them, they were like, they called them hashtags, but at least they acknowledged the fact that there was something in front of that. No, I've never seen anything like this. Like y'all see a G sharp, a F sharp, a C natural and ignore it. Like it means nothing to you. I had a friend, she said when she first started playing in school band, she thought accidentals were optional. I said, that's how I'll be playing. <laughs> what a mood. I don't feel like it. <laughs> Not today. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to see I'm gonna see how the weather looking. <laughs> but so I'll be like, they'll play like something forte. And if I have time, I look at my score 
and I'll be like, that's funny. And I go over, I might go over to, if I got time, time, <laughs> I'll go over to the cello part cello section. I look at their music. I go to the violin section with the days. <laughs> and I'll be you going back all the way back to the bases. <laughs> you imagine if I had time. Okay, be like, could you put your bass down and bring up your thing to me? Let me see. Hmm. I'm like, that's funny. Y'all got a crescendo written in. <laughs> and then the thing that's petty, I'm so petty because they looking like, no. Nah. I'm like, so then why y'all get louder? Just <laughs> like, for fun. <laughs> just to be petty. Just to keep morale high. Positive classroom environment. <laughs> I think in general, I mean, even though I'm petty or whatever, I think my kids like, I mean, one girl, one girl who's always like, can I give you a hug? Can I da 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 da? The bass player's sister. No. She's Wait. Like, the bass player at my location, mm-hmm. he has a sister. She's really like that? You, you didn't, yeah. Oh. She'd be like, I have a baseball game today and I go on a field trip and I don't know. And Miss Brown, da, da, da. I've never seen her speak. <laughs> yeah, she's quiet. She's like, Miss, and, and, Ki, da, da, da. and like, she's all up on, like, can I have a hug? Like, I came for her. I came for her. Yeah, it's crazy. I came for her the other day. She got mad at me. She got over it. I think, like, yeah. I think kids in general, like, they like being there. You know, I act a mess. You know, I say whatever. I'll be like, oh, y'all sound good. Play that again. It's, right. it's a balance. It's not always yeah. like I'm on day next. Especially if I do, if I say something rude in the middle. You know, I try to bring it back up before I let them go. I don't send them off. If if they're working on a hard piece and I've been nailing them for like an hour, I'll end with like Dragon Slayer because mm-hmm. I know they can play that. So they leave feeling like they accomplished something, you know. Yeah. But like, it's, it's fun to be petty, especially like <laughs> first of all, these kids will bring you there. It's not even first, like these are normal yeah. kids. These are not. These kids are about it. Like I almost said her name. The um. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the one Miss Brown. Yeah. You, so- <laughs> <laughs> you know what I realized? God always sends me one student to try me. <laughs> because I was the I, I was that kid. You know, I was like I wouldn't try teachers, but like I would joke around the orchestra mm-hmm. mainly because I was bored. Until I got until I got to when the music was no longer boring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So God always reminds me, Hey, you were this kid. So mm-hmm. I got one right now. Miss Brown, how you vegan and you so thick? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you that took me down. Miss <laughs> Brown, uh uh-uh. uh, why y'all trying to be like me? I'm like you're twelve. Miss <laughs> Brown, actually, I ain't trying to be like you. No bills, my right? Exactly. Uh, oh shoot, <laughs> I'm gonna say it to her next time because I can't. Be- I ain't trying to be like you. Right, and not a care in the world. Not a care. You go, you go home to uh do your worksheet. Right, your homework is Which, a worksheet. What a concept. Dinner cook for you. Din- Free. Free. <laughs> No rent? No rent, dude. Oh, I'm sorry. You got your phone taken away. Now you could just, you could read for fun. <laughs> you could, you could stare at the wall without any stress. I went on this couch all day, stare at the wall. And then what? Viola still not touched? Yes. Actually, you know what, little girl? I want to be just like you. <laughs> I'm going to tell her that next time. But you know what? She bought it. she be like, uh-uh, do got bills. I'm like, what? She... <laughs> The ice cream truck right she, <laughs> she's a piece of work like but i always when i see her and you know our boss be like i'll be like i, I i'm prepared for this i have mm-hmm. one it was it was naraya before her it was anaya before i said mm-hmm. if i had a daughter named her naya like anaya before her it was um a zanrie before her wow. yeah i i always have <laughs> that one uh, but I didn't really care for her. It's different. Mm-hmm. Like it was Victoria before that. Like I always have one student who bought it. <laughs> just, just so God knows. Like yeah, <laughs> I keep my promises, y'all. Right. <laughs> like, but um, yeah. Piece yeah. of work. Why you so? I got one more. <gasps> okay. Um, and before I say this, before Ooh. y'all get on my neck, Ooh, I'm excited. I just want y'all to, like, like we said before, these kids will take you there. I did not start off here. <laughs> I did not start tell, off here. And you know what? I was telling Delaney earlier, like, I don't hold grudges against students. They're kids. Right. So, this is just one student that just makes me, I ain't gonna fill in the blank. And it's, I, I wipe the slate clean every day. Mm. You know, and it's also like, I've learned to look for the best in a student. Yeah. That, that was a lesson I learned early on because I was like, ugh. And then someone was like, Cause I, you know. yeah, there's, there's, there's Cause always terrible kids. You know, like, you know, I, I talk, that same girl I'm talking about, 
I taught some a piece, but uh, I taught a song by ear as a warm up a couple of days ago. And she was like, "This is great! Like, I love playing by ear." And I'm like, "This is fantastic! Like, mm-hmm. you're fine because she struggles with reading." And I'm like, "This is great! Like, she's engaged. She's." And I'm like, "Now I know that about her. There's mm-hmm. always something, and it's like she's really nice and like there's always something." But yeah, but these just, raggedy kids will take you. They will take you there. I didn't like that's the thing like you don't even be there and I don't understand why people want to look at you crazy like you you can't remember you can't think back to when when this started and I was all fine and you walked in you walked in but you might have walked in with a smile right exactly and (laughs) and now we're here and you're and you're looking back on how we got here you packed my bags you booked the flight I hitched a ride on you (laughs) (laughs) you took me here (laughs) you took me here I got all you I piggybacked off of you to get here (laughs) And that's what they that's what they don't understand. They all they forget the journey and only wonder oh. about the destination. <laughs> it's not just the destination, it's the journey as well. So anyway, they're like, what happened? So I have this one student and oh my goodness. Bless your heart because I, I have him with other students, I'll still be <gasps> goodness. This student whenever I'm telling like, oh my god, my skin is crawling just thinking about it because he, he always playing while the teacher is conducting and i don't conduct all the time oh, sometimes i'm back there you know or i'm floating around i'm not the main conductor sometimes i do though and we're not gonna get into it but these kids don't act that way when i'm up on the podium let's no, just say like, that we'll just leave it there yeah um but every time the conductor is talking he plucking it and, oh. and playing full volume and i have to tell him and i'll be like stop playing I just and, I, and I start there. I, I started staring at him. Mm. But I'm not like I'm next to him. Oh yeah. So yeah. um so like I start off with stop playing, and he'll s- stop playing, and then literally like sometimes he'll wait a while, but sometimes it'll li- literally be like maybe three seconds later Ugh. that he'll stop, and I'll be like, and I escalate every time, stop playing, and I'm like, what don't what what what's not See, clicking? Because then now you gotta get rude. What's what's not clicking? Because then I start asking. <laughs> Am I not speaking in English? Like, it's a, you got to start asking rude questions. Right. Or you could have just done what I asked you to do. And now... See so yeah, how you were patting your... your what's not clicking? <laughs> what is it? You got to be... I'm going to start confiscating your bow. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what happened. So, we we doing a lesson now. And um, there's a part. It's a lot of pizzicato. And... Um, and you know, people kids love to plug while while you know people talk because they think wish, it's quiet. They think can't nobody hear that. I just wish that they would have that energy at home, right? In their <laughs> own. But that's no, another conversation. You don't want us to practice not here. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never thinking about practicing unless you hear, huh? Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I I'm telling him he can't. He not playing right notes. I'm like, okay, let's do it long with the bow. Um, so that you can learn the notes because you're not mm-hmm. reading the notes. Um. And he he getting irritated and, and raising his voice. And I'm like, I don't know who Ooh. he think he's talking to. <laughs> I was like, you guys looking, looking at around. him. I was looking at him like, wow, he really don't know <laughs> what he get himself into, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he don't know that I'm not the one. Because you go home and you say whatever, but not here. <laughs> exactly, baby boy. <laughs> um, he's like, if I use the ball, I'm not going to know how to plug. I said, well, you know how to plug because you've been doing it all the time when I'm telling you to stop while she's talking. So what? <gasps> and he didn't say nothing else to me. For the rest that. of the day. For the rest of the time. I'm you show me every day you know how to plug. <laughs> <laughs> While Miss So and so was talking. The listeners looking at me, let me see what program is in Rochester so I can make sure my kids don't go there. <laughs> Send your kids. Lessons. Day in and day out, you plug it. I just could not because that whole day, that wasn't the only thing that happened of that course day. Not. He took me there that one day and it just I don't know, like I left there with your blood pressure high. My blood pressure was skyrocketing. If you had stabbed me, my it would have been like a geyser. <laughs> like <laughs> my blood pressure. I'm was, telling you, these kids take years off my life. Certain kids, you can, and the, especially the ones that are not disciplined at home, they think they could come here and say anything to you. Oh, I am not your mother. You are not. Gonna, I will hurt your feelings. You're not gonna talk to me any kind of way. I will hurt your feelings for real. Because I have to hit him with the what, what you want me to do here? Sit here and not teach you? What? <laughs> what what'd he say B- nothing what can you say because I'm, because we, i just don't understand why you talking over me you're not listening to me if you knew it then i wouldn't be here and it'd be the ones with the most terrible technique that got the most to say you <laughs> ridiculous and it's not even like it's not even like you know but i haven't i've noticed a little bit improvement we can call her rachel Okay. the other bass player mm-hmm. i've noticed a little bit of improvement in her hand so i guess the money Hopefully. a little bit but she's still grabbing the neck i'm like i'm trying 
you have so much to say about well and then and i don't think and you, then you have all this like if you were doing it right i wouldn't say exactly. anything to you you don't you're, this is not a baseball bat why are you holding your bow like that but you know what since you know everything right i, I, I that's, asked her that's <laughs> the issue it's like in and everything that i try to correct is well technically and i can't really do that i'm like i am not asking you to make this correction right here and now i'm asking you to break a habit and i understand that that takes time mm-hmm. you don't have to explain that to me and that's what gets on gets on my nerves because you you sit here acting like you know more than me who's who's sitting up at eastman and who not right so i don't understand. you're a child like <laughs> i said this to rachel the other day i was like I, I, cor- I corrected the other bass player. Mm-hmm. And I was like, did you get that or do you know already? <laughs> I was fed. Oh, that reminds me of another time I was working with both of them. Oh. And, but you see, he knows he knows what time it is. He be so annoyed. That's why he does his own thing. That's why I had to ask him on Thursday, I, oh, whatever day. Friday, I was like, can you please just work together? <laughs> <laughs> I know he know. He be looking at her like, oh. Yeah, because every he does time I so come, much. every time I come over, he do he doing it, and Rachel complained about how hard it is. Mm-hmm. So I was, I looked at him, I'm like, just him, which is like not right. But I looked at him, I'm like, can you just please, <laughs> please work with, not I didn't say it with her because mm-hmm. I know I'm not gonna isolate her. Mm-hmm. I'm like, can you please work together because mm-hmm. you guys are a section. Because mm-hmm. I, I mean, we'll see where morale gets. Maybe I will say with her, but I know that's like not mm-hmm. appropriate because what kids <coughs> love to do is is point out or these particular ones will point out like the one discrepancy it's not even a discrepancy it's something so like small that they interpreted clearly the wrong way and they know what you meant but they want to point it out because they you know they just want to or whatever like i'll be like 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 that the kid that i was talking about who i had to had to check Mm -hmm. when you said play like in the string oh yeah and he's bow like underneath the string and it's still not even in the string you never mind (laughs) like it'd be stuff like that and i remember there was a couple a couple of times where it was just me working with them and and i said something and she's like well technically you said but i said well he got it so (laughs) (laughs) i don't understand like sometimes you just gotta make it plain i don't care one of my sores like you, this might sound Cause bad because you're not gonna you're not gonna tell me that i said that i didn't say it wrong exactly you're like go- especially like you saying it like of all the bass players <laughs> y'all finally got someone here that actually knows how to play the bass and you exactly and, and you act like this you cut up like this you don't realize that you've been learning from people that don't know how to play the bass and now look at your technique and now look at it and now i gotta clean up the mess that Mm. So and so made. <laughs> so, I mean, we sound bad, but my sore, one of my sores online, <laughs> she uh she sends me, cause she she teaches uh public school, and she's fed up, <laughs> so she'll she'll post stuff like, <clears throat> um, I gotta find it, but uh we should we should move on to uh to black, but like I'm telling you, like these kids will do it, and sometimes it's like. You don't want to be rude or nothing. Like, you don't want to be, like... I know how much is too much. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, like, sometimes you just got to... You just got to make it plain to them. You just got to be, like... You know? Yeah, because I've had kids just say stuff smart and try to and try to make it seem like I'm dumb or whatever. And that's what that's what you won't do. You're not going to do that. But, um... Believe it or not, these kids actually like us. Yeah. And most of the time, most of the time, these things don't happen. But we were just telling petty petty moments because a lot of them are funny. Yeah, but, I mean, like, I might like, all my all my kids every day, like, yo, yo, try. like, you know, like, no, we just haven't. But I never start off this way. Just remember that you took me here. Sometimes you got to put the fault in the kids' hands. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes, I can't, I'll find it later. It doesn't matter. But sometimes you just got to. And it's the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Everybody holding on by a thread. My my sans posted something. She was like, "Y'all at this point, y'all gonna have to teach yourselves." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Sans, when you got when you done with school?" She was like, "Um, <laughs> she was like, the end of June. It's the beginning of May. I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't I, imagine. I don't know what she's going through. And remind and remember that state testing already happened here in New York. So you have two and a, you have two months." Where kids are already scatterbrained. And it's nice outside. You know kids start cutting up when it's nice out. Mm-hmm. 
Child, I don't know. Literally. Speaking of my sans, um, my sans Kimberly, I'm so proud of her. She um she te- she's an English teacher here in RCSD. Um, I was talking to her about the cur- what, like what curriculum. She's like, child, I don't follow that curriculum. I said, <laughs> she's like, that curriculum is not for us. It wasn't written by us. She's like, I follow the standards, mm-hmm. but she she always got her kids like researching black things and reading black. They always read black books and written by either with characters of color. <clears throat> or by authors of color mm-hmm. and i think i think um her their last project is something about like uh, um researching black historical figures and and writing about them and then also writing biographies mm-hmm. autobiographies so she she so we talk about the last thing is the importance of black teachers mm-hmm. so yeah i mean i think that that um what she's doing is really like what i was getting at when i brought this up because like i grew up in a i had a school like for the for the longest from the very beginning up until like i was forced to leave which ugh. but um for the longest i went to a school that was run by a black couple it was founded by a black couple um most of my teachers were black pretty much all the students were black um in a black neighborhood and we we did black history programs like we we uh it was it it was like really not focused on that, but that was a part of it. Mm-hmm. And also, my mom is like that. My mom is is like she made sure that we were connected to that, mm-hmm. um, to Black history and stuff. But I think it's like having Black kids learn about their history because ain't no other school gonna teach it if exactly. You don't. Um, or they they say that we all we were were slaves and right. <clears throat> or in some I saw this one book. It was going around like a picture of one textbook. It was like African slaves agreed to come here. Wow. And- <laughs> And then <clears throat> after and work for this amount of time, and then after that they were kept against their will. I was like, "Whoa!" Probably the same person who wrote the pledge. So, <laughs> look at that. Who wrote the pledge? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I quit. I quit. I quit for now. Sure. Right. I was just about <laughs> to say, yeah, for now. Um. Yeah, but I think that. It, it's really important to have that because I would not be like the person that I am today if I didn't have all that, that like that foundation. And I feel like I don't want to be like, oh, I feel bad for y'all when y'all don't have that or whatever. But I feel like it just it that you miss out on so much when you don't when you don't like look at things from that perspective of mm-hmm. like having that whole of, of of seeing blackness and seeing like racial relations in like things that you might not normally think of that like i just got into an argument last night which escalated so quickly but again took me there um <laughs> about, up. about black panther and about how black panther is not just a superhero movie are oh, you not even kidding you see, are you kidding you see in africa because we were conditioned to think that Africa was just dirt and huts. Like, yo, you have a movie in Africa with people who are affluent and saving the rest of the world because y'all messed it up. Like, I would into the. It's just and 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 this person was like dumbing it down and was like, just a guy whose dad was killed, so then he went killing everybody. I'm like, that is not it. Why was his dad killed? Like it was just it was a whole thing. I'm not gonna get into it, but there are so many messages. Yeah, I think I, y'all so woke for real. And then <laughs> and then when it finally when the argument finally calmed down and this person was trying to listen to me, I could tell like he was trying to keep up in the intellectual conversation. Just sounded yeah, you dumb. Just sounded stupid. Like oh yeah, that's crazy. Cause like that's the crazy. people, oh, wow, they shouldn't be doing all that. Yeah, like. So I just feel like when people, when you don't, when you're not used to having, first of all, civil disagreements with people and you're not used to, you don't have like that whole perspective of like your history, where your people came from, the different relations between like the different types of black people and all that. Like if you don't have any like concept of that, you miss out on so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like that's something that people miss out on because of education. Cause who else going to teach it to you? Exactly. I feel like that's why it's important to have black teachers and people that, um, that care about this type of stuff. Cause like, at the end of the day like people people gonna teach you what they care about mm-hmm. they, if, especially right. if they have the 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 freedom to choose their own curriculum mm-hmm. like they're going to teach you the things that they feel are important and the things that they want you to know mm-hmm. which is why you and mr taylor probably have you you remember he said you said he was telling you all them stories about you know his career and being right. the only black person in this and this and that like that's something that's relevant 
to him and his life and also relevant to you mm-hmm. and i don't know i mean i can't say because i'm not in his lessons with his other students yeah, I can't say, but you know i can't tell you all his students know yeah, yeah exactly so i just think that that's that's <clears throat> part of it and and at this level it's easier to it's easier to recognize mm-hmm. the importance in that because like you've grown mm-hmm. but like yeah i mean for me like i had I, th- I talked about one time i had a black teacher um miss phillips who i didn't appreciate in retrospect because she did so much like Mm -hmm. memorizing edgar Allan poe and john we were 10 (laughs) (laughs) and the raven flew in the (laughs) like like, just doing a lot but i didn't i didn't appreciate her um until until retrospect but like i was kind of conflicted when we want to talk about the importance of my teacher i think i think i understand the importance of black kids seeing me in front of them conducting them uh-huh. like seeing them in a career that they they might not have thought black people did they don't uh-huh. think black people like I, I i understand that's important but i struggled i struggled for a long time to think that it really mattered to them mm-hmm. just because i had a student um named nyan and that's his name just because he got on my nerves but and i don't think he's a minor anymore so it doesn't matter but um his name was nyan and he gave me he didn't give me a hard time because like who are we talking about mm-hmm. like i'm about it you know what i'm saying like i literally would kick you out of my classroom and i'm like you can leave or like my my five foot self can make you leave so it, it just depends on what time i i have time that's mm-hmm. a the, the, y'all it's yeah, a psa a, for these kids to stop trying me. i just, have time they think you're just gonna skate over it and no, I'll, be, I'll put the baton down i have <laughs> time i will put the i'll pull up a chair we, exactly what are we doing let me know what are we doing mm-hmm. So he he was just like on my nerves all all year, right? So I put in my resignation, and he, like a bunch of them are hanging out in my in my office, and he's like, "Dang, Miss Brown, like you leaving? Like I ain't never had I never had a black teacher before, a, a, a black orchestra teacher before." And I'm like, "You never will again. Like you you won't. Mm-hmm. I mean, and not to say like there are more black teachers, of course, but like the probability of another yeah. one coming and you're a sophomore." Mm-hmm yeah so i'm like you'll never have another one like look how you acted in my class so for a long time i was like he's like yeah cuz like (laughs) i love black kids cuz he's so annoying um it's like it's just crazy because it's like you know i was like for a long time i don't think they care but then also like you made a good point like watching how kids interact with me it's like i don't know if they care so much that i'm black but Mm -hmm. i i do think that i don't i don't know i want to take a survey (laughs) but it's like I think it's important for them to see me in this space. And I think that they appreciate it. Like they'd be like my kids, when I taught my middle schoolers, they'd be all up on my desk. They'd be all in my room mm-hmm. in, during their lunch period. Miss Brown, what'd you pack today? Miss mm-hmm. Brown, uh, this boy said this to me. And like, just like interacting with me in, in, in a way that they're not able to interact with yeah. their other teachers, you know, like you see the way that, that, that young lady interacts with me a lot of the kids like mm-hmm. uh-uh miss brown you do too much i got i get that a lot mm-hmm. oh you got an attitude today miss <laughs> brown i'm like because of y'all <laughs> like just stuff like that yeah and i think that um i feel like it's it's just it's different when you see like it, it, even like i've talked about this a lot how i feel kind of conditioned to act differently like around around white people mm-hmm. um so i feel like some kids who have that whole culture of like code switching they just don't feel like comfortable that way and then it, once you show them once you show them a little bit of your personality and they're like oh okay what's you know like, oh yeah even when even when i see like the other teachers trying to make conversation with them it's still very much like a, oh what are you doing today? you know mm-hmm. like that and they're just like oh, okay but it's different when when you're talking to them and then what you said about like how you had that teacher where you didn't really realize at the time like you you thought she did too much at the time even if the kids don't re- they don't recognize it then at some point they probably will yeah they'll be like dang like Miss yeah. Delaney was black yeah teacher base so it's like it I feel like even if they don't recognize it now because kids like that's it's, it's reasonable to think that they might like they might not be like oh this significant why would powerful they? you know yeah why would they but like I feel like when when they look back at it and be like dang i had a black orchestra teacher we was lit she told me that that tchaikovsky was lit and right and she, yeah you know and we was merely rocking to the right <laughs> i remember because even like the way that you interact like they finally the basis well he got it mm-hmm. and i felt bad because i was gassing i was like yeah that's it keep going <laughs> keep going and i felt bad cause i ain't said rachel's name but she wasn't playing it so but this, I knew what I was doing, so I checked my bias, and mm. 
we played it again. Mm. I was like, that's right, Rachel. That's correct. <laughs> right. But I was, that's right. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> but I gassed him. Because I was like, yes. Because you know the end of the Beethoven goes, I don't even know why he would pick this edition. But it goes, ba, 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 da, da, da. Mm. You know, like, it's so freaking hard. Especially, like, why can't it just be triplets? Why can't it just be, uh-huh. why can't it be one, two, three, four, five, six? Even then, you know. And they got it. And I was like, hey, y'all want to play that again? Right. Like, this is y'all. And they, they be. Yeah. Like, and then one kid, uh, one kid came up to me he, after class. He was like, uh, we did good, Miss Brown. We impressed you today. I'm like, yeah. yeah. And it's like. You know, and even when they don't like do something correctly, like the way that you that you handle that, like I remember one time that I was waiting, I was I was peeping, I peeped that piano on the violent entrance, and I was like, let me see how they gonna come in, whatever, because mm-hmm. we were just talking about uh, dynamics, and so then when I cut them off, I'm like, what that say right there? They said a piano. I said, uh huh. Y'all came in with all of this. Right. <laughs> so I was like, save that for later. Like, right. What? And they like, oh okay, ha. you know, right. like just talking to them in a, and and they're not these kids aren't dumb. Yeah, they know they understand, but it's like you speak to them in a in a way that make them feel comfortable. Yeah, you know? in a way because they like, oh well, she teach she teach orchestra and she talk like how I talk. Exactly. So. And that means and even even like even more than that, it's like she's in a position of power and she talks the way mm-hmm. I talk. I feel she like she got braids and hoops on and exactly. she got her gloss popping. It's like that that yeah, means else? something. Like, you know, like they and you know, like I'm out all the time. I got white students as well. Mm-hmm. I have Asian students as well. So it's not all the time like but I'm that's that's been a, a personal journey of me where I just talk the way I the way mm-hmm. I talk and act ratchet the way I act mm-hmm. and you know <laughs> any and all of the above. I I pretty much act the same way. But also I, I react to the energy in the room. So mm-hmm. I'm not I wasn't <clears throat> when I had that Saturday morning orchestra, I wasn't lit. Mm-hmm in the same way because that's not the energy I was getting. Mm-hmm. Now I'm yelling at them and they looking at me like, <laughs> <laughs> but I'd be like, yes, that was it. Do it again. You know, mm-hmm. I said something like that, but like, I'll be, okay, y'all did play this. Play this. Go ahead with your bad self. Go ahead and play <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, what made me think about this is that video that's circling around of that black teacher with all her little black students singing the um, Old Town Road remix. Mm-hmm. It's like about math class. I was like, mm-hmm. now, you know, then when they would have been in the classroom, all right, give me your worksheet and here's your, and the timer's on and two mm-hmm. plus two equals, right. you know, like, but they were so excited about math. Yeah. They were so excited. It was so, and you know, I don't even really like, I don't, it's rare that I would see a video of a child and be like, oh, that's cute, you mm-hmm. know? But I was like, dang, like, mm-hmm. that, like that's a way that the, she got them so excited about learning because she took something that, like, you know, that's something that they know that's in their, po- in, in popular culture and right now. And it's popular right now. Yeah. I think a lot of people, like, like, you know, we, go, we, we about to play Viva La Vida. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, for what? It's old and it's by Coldplay. <laughs> but sure. <laughs> and, like, I mean, just, like, Bakiana, you could teach your kids in your little orchestra class. But is, sound Bakiana is is Bakiana appropriate? Did we say anything in there? That's I mean, it's not really it's not really relevant because we say things about us. Yeah, but we did say like some verses are are relevant, but we said like it's Katie and Delaney podcast. Oh yeah, Sanka. like that's not relevant to them. But I'm just saying like things like that. I even said like they were getting on my nerves, but like I was already being tense, mm-hmm. so I was like I was like look alive, and they were like I was like what song is that from? And they're like. We all, I'm like 901 Shelby Johnny like, look at that <laughs> <laughs> and yeah now one time when you was like you like Cardi B uh, play the first you was doing like a round and you was like play first if you like Cardi B play second if you play, like Nicki Minaj and, and, and freaking Alice uh, sent me cause he was like how you gonna bring that beef into our classroom <laughs> <laughs> kids, are fun. <laughs> kids are hilarious if you let them kids are hilarious all right, like and then they just be like um, right. Could, let's just do a round yeah. and we're gonna and yeah. quiet down if you're wearing blue. You can, girl. <laughs> I mean, we could be lit. Yeah, I'd be lit. And also play like it's the embodiment of this podcast. We're lit, and we also play Mozart mm-hmm. both at the same time. Yeah. Hey. Oh, what y'all doing? It's like we do octaves. We have something similar. It go Oh yeah, yeah. We go up and we go. Oh yes. 
you know what? I don't have a problem. Like, I understand, like, y'all are innovative and stuff like that. But, like, who was playing that? Literally no one. I, like, what that? I remember... I and was, he was over here writing stuff the morning of. And exactly. And ain't ain't nobody no started reading ain't that. nobody so. Okay. Right. I remember we were talking about... Um, you ain't fooling nobody. We were talking about that in Middle, middle Ages. And um, he was like, you... Um, a lot of people don't... We're talking about, like, accuracy of performance practice. I'm like, first of all, y'all barely even had paper back then. But sure and it was like if we look if we listen to some of these old recordings like we have what's it called wax recordings and you you will like probably would not like the sound of it i'm like i'm sure the instruments are trash the sun barely came out it smelled like piss <laughs> you smell after the recording <laughs> yep mm-hmm. right y'all yeah y'all better how did you write stuff that y'all got some more goose blood so i can write out this bass part <laughs> goose blood. yeah you know good and damn well they had no um they didn't what to call it they had no bass part. Right, exactly. When y'all start getting bass parts? Beethoven? Beethoven's parts are combined, but they're more individualized. Like, they're still on the same paper, but he he separated it more than and, anyone else. It wasn't just, like, identical. And by his Ninth Symphony, didn't y'all have, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, he, he never fully separated them, and, like, sometimes... But he, he... They were way more individualized. And then Brahms... Brahms' dad was a bass player, so he was like, I'm finna... And he... I'm finna do my daddy right. I'm finna... Right. And he started... He was separating junk, and just when we got our own piece of paper. Which is fine. Like, Beethoven, I think, did a great job... Great, did a great job. Because, like, we can still play some stuff the same as the cellos, but, like, he realized, like, oh, bass, it doesn't make sense for me to make the bassist, bassist do that with them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna do something else. Rather than... And Mozart, who's just yeah, okay, boy, genius, yeah, whatever. Wow, boy, genius, my left booty cheek, but okay, just the left one. Mm-hmm. That's good. Okay, well, um, we're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know if you have any teachers in your life, um, that made this profound difference on you. Hmm. Oh, you in? Who's hitting you up? Nobody. Oh. Nobody. Can't say it on air or it's Jasmine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thought it was nobody. You're trash. You're trash. Anyway, <laughs> let us know if you have any teachers that made a profound effect on you, but even more, if you have any petty stories, we'd love to hear we them. We would love to. I would love. If you have any ideas of how we could get even pettier, then <laughs> <laughs> please share. <laughs> Send them to classically black podcast at gmail.com and we are moving Keep on. Getting it. You remember last episode? <laughs> well, I couldn't get anything. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm taking morale been low, y'all. <laughs> morale been low. Okay. So, it's time for the Black Excellence where we hype you up, gas you up, and give you your props because there's room for everybody at the top. Who you got? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who? Oh, shoot. The what? The la la la. That was you. <laughs> All right, so everybody buckle up because we've got another one with oh, let me. a plethora of accomplishments. Sure I was literally reading this. I had to first of all, I had to put it. I was just like, wait, hold on. Like my head was spinning. You probably thought you was reading two different two different biographies I combined. Like, right. I was like, now hold up. Is this one person or it's still twenty four hours in a day? That's what I'm about that to change? say. Like how y'all be doing all this? Maybe if I, I don't even. Oh my goodness. But this year, this year. <laughs> You know what? God is faithful. You see how this all come back around? Like your words ain't working. Go ahead, sis. Who we talking about this year? Who's Black Excellence of the Year? All right. So Black Excellence of the Year goes to <laughs> no more Black Excellences for the rest of the year because he has it for the year. I mean, he got enough accomplishments. That's too. true. They're like, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> Damari McGill. Come on, Dam- what? Damar? Dem- I don't know if it's Damar or Damare. I feel like it's Damare because it's a E at the end. He black, so. Yeah. Ooh, do he got a comma after? That's real black. My pastor got a comma after it. A, a comma? Yeah. Or an accent. Oh, okay. <laughs> the little apost- apostrophe. Like, yeah, or the accent over the E. Like it's, supposed to, got. it's supposed to be an accent, but you know black people. Yeah. Yeah. It, it goes back I, and forth. Can you imagine the comma in your <laughs> <laughs> I always get them confused me while they're literally in two different places. Oh, now I want to do that. A comma in your name. <laughs> That's ratchet. It's like a dasha. Oh yeah, with the <laughs> All right. We could be putting parentheses around my name. Okay, the me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so Demar McGill. <laughs> Right, finally. <laughs> right. So, um, I brought him up as black excellence because of his re- uh, most recent accomplishment, which was being appointed to the uh, position of associate professor of flute at Cincinnati Conservatory of Music. Come through, CCM. Right, gang, gang. Um, he joined. Um, his his uh new appointment will begin in August on August fifteenth of twenty of this year of twenty nineteen. Um, but he was also a visiting uh professor since uh twenty seventeen. So they were just like, well, let's just go on ahead and finish it, you know. Right. Just, I mean, just give people these things. We talked about somebody else who was um Titus, mm. who was acting principal. Yeah. Give him his stuff. Just what y'all playing around for? Right. He's already here. Right. Exactly. Right. And he's already snatching y'all edges it's off. All, like just, already better than they're not gonna grow back. Exactly. The follicle is damaged. Like and already better than any of y'all could ever be. So what so are we really even doing? Really, exactly. So uh, <coughs> these accomplishments getting stuck in my throat so many of them it's just like a traffic pile up <laughs> um <laughs> so <laughs> um he's been the winner of the prestigious avery fisher career grant which avery fisher grant. um and the sphinx medal of excellence um he is a leading soloist recitalist and chamber and orchestral musician um he began playing f- uh flute sorry he's a fl- yeah, I said that. Yeah, I said that. Um, um, he began playing flute at age seven, and he attended the Merritt School of Music from Chicago. Okay, seven seven three three one two seven zero eight. Stand up two two four. Sometimes. All right. <laughs> um, at age fifteen, he appeared as a soloist with the Chicago Symphony. Okay, so <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> I am ready to go. Chicago. Okay. Um, and then he has since appeared as a soloist, the Philadelphia Orchestra, and the Seattle, Pittsburgh, Dallas, San Diego, and Baltimore Symphonies. <laughs> just list the ones you haven't played with. Right. <laughs> let's just let's just start there, because I mean, um, in 2018, he also um presented some master classes in South Africa, Korea, and Japan. Um, in that same year, he was a soloist with the New York uh, Youth Symphony at Carnegie Hall, and he performed uh, with the cath- the Cathedral Choral Society at the National Cathedral in Washington D.C. The only good thing going on over there, besides Howard. Yep. So, um, me. Right. <laughs> um, uh, he's also a founding member of the Myriad uh, Trio and a founding member of Chamber Music Society too. Um, he's pers- he's participated in Af- Aspen, Santa Fe, Marlboro, Seattle, and St- Stellenbosch chamber music festivals to name a few that's what they said to in name the a article, few in the article wow said, to name a few so they realized right they're like we literally my hands are cramping up i've been typing for days yeah i'm like I there's a character limit or the girls and editing gonna get mad the, so the, we don't have the bandwidth for this on our yeah, website i mean like we don't have enough storage for this on these pcs right so, so we're not trying to crash the computer exactly yet again because after all the other this is the third try with right. all these accomplishments so. right um he's also the uh, co-founder of the art of Ellen, I think that's how you spell it. It's E with an accent over it. Um, then L A N, so Aylin or something. And along with his brother, which y'all know, oh. clarinetist Anthony McGill is principal. Well, of this New York makes Phil. sense, right? I was like, so where oh, y'all get some of y'all blood, it. right? Who where y'all? Listen, um, yeah. So, I mean, his brother is sickening. Principal clarinetist of the New York Philharmonic. Um, but he also um God. that that group is a um it's a trio with him his brother and pianist michael mchale what that even sound like right i bet you like when you in line to get into heaven they got god got them right just and, right and, right exactly and, um they formed the uh mcgill slash mchale trio in 2014 um he received his uh his bachelor's uh degree from curtis and his master's degree from Juilliard. I'm ready to go. Um, and I don't believe I mentioned this, but he's also currently um, principal of the Seattle Symphony. So what? How do you have time? <laughs> this don't make sense. Listen. There has to be a limit of how sickening you right. can be. Right. You know, even Beyonce said, she was like, you know, I'm not going to do all of this again. Because <laughs> you, have, you have to know when you reach your limit. Right. Like, the girls, you're scalping the girls. I forgot to say this. Uh, there's more. Oh, here there's we go. More. So I just said he's now principal of uh, flute of the Seattle Symphony, but he's also served previously as principal flute of the Dallas Symphony, San Diego Symphony, Florida Orchestra, and Santa Fe Opera Orchestra. Um, and then he also recently <laughs> served as acting principal flute of the Met. Um, and, er- and earlier, the Pittsburgh Symphony. <laughs> you know what's happening? What? Because I was like, why would you go to so many orchestras? But you know what's, you know what's going on? they tired of the girls coming out of rehearsal with 
their hair going <laughs> because it's one thing to snatch edges right. but when you start the hairline start moving back behind the ears <laughs> Somebody from HR is like, you know what, sir? This, this is officially a, a hostile work environment. <laughs> and it's, it's probably like not even like they ain't calling him by his first name. It's like Mr. McGill, <laughs> Your Majesty. I'm so sorry to say this, but like everybody looks like they got alopecia. So you, I, I, we've run out of cream. <laughs> we don't have enough. Ain't enough got to be glued to keep these on, girl. <laughs> and we frankly don't have wigs in the budget. So you know what? Um, we're gonna let you go. Um, so sorry to do this, and right. he goes to the next orchestra. Right, he just making his rounds around the country. What? <laughs> I can't believe I almost because I remember the Seattle thing. I'm that's what I know him from of being mm-hmm. principal yeah, of the Seattle yeah. Symphony. So when I didn't see that on the notes that I made, I was like, did I forget to put that on there? And then I found that whole other paragraph. Can you imagine of the Met? The Met's the best op- the best orchestra in the country. Like that is insane. And you flew to so you, you on top. You the fl- that's incredible. What? And a black man. And, and you black. <laughs> you better be black. And your name Damari. You. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Mr. Damari, that's Damari, sir, to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go ahead, black man. Do your thing. Listen. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I just. And you know what? I remember showing my mom, because flute is her favorite instrument, mm-hmm. and showing her a video of him. He was working with, like, a little <laughs> black boy, like, playing yes. duets with one of his students. I was like, you better. That is amazing. Wow. Oh. Shout out to you, black man. Do your thing. Black teacher. Exactly. <laughs> what the heck? Ridiculous. I, what do you even? How do you even? I don't even know. Like, what would you? I couldn't even fathom these accomplishments. What? I couldn't imagine. Because yeah, it's like. In the, do you, I wonder if he ever sits down and be like, wow, I really did that. <laughs> like, because. I just. I can't fathom accomplishing them because like, honestly, I just wanted to make it to one orchestra. Like mm-hmm. I just want to make it into one opera orchestra. And even then I'm going to sit back and be like, damn, sis, I did that. Right. But it, you I'm literally, bored of, I'm bored over here at the Met. Let me go and see what Seattle talking right. about. Then let me go see what Pittsburgh talking about. And then what's going on over there in, um, in, 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 in San Diego. He's like, Dallas. Know, and now he's like, you know, I might could teach <laughs> <laughs> at a conservatory. Right. Like, I got whiplash. I mean, honestly, my neck is just very tired, mm-hmm. very sore. Wow. Say goodbye to what's left of my edges. Um, I mean, these black excellence have been taking me out. Really? So, um, black ex- excellence edge control coming soon. Maybe yeah, we gonna have to do something for the girls because right because people don't what we don't want people to do is start skipping through. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, we're going to have to sort that out. Yeah, see what we're going to do. Some head scarves, some hats yeah. to cover it up. Just, you know. Because we just cannot have our people walking around looking right. bald. I mean, at least you'll be able to tell who else listens to the classic you black. Yeah, Christy. because their hairline stopped behind their ears. Uh, right, so. Wow, that's crazy, dog. You, you look like you part wig. <laughs> I remember when you said that. <laughs> and when I say low tide, I said high tide, I meant low tide. I, but I knew that's what you yeah. meant. Yeah. I took it down. <laughs> Keep being black and excellent. I, I, I mean, at this point, what I mean, I just don't understand what you're doing. What are you doing with the edges? Are you are you keeping them as souvenirs? Are you making little I paper mean, dolls? Or his previous employer are tired of swipping them up. Right. You so, got a fur coat made out of our edges. Definitely got a fur coat. You remember Matt? Um, what's the what's the antagonist from 101 Dalmatians? Oh, Corella Deville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got one of them coat. What? Got a coat look just like that. Right. Made out of edges. <laughs> <laughs> the day in sections, they in sections. You got four B over here. Yeah. Got four C right here. And then if you turn it inside out, he also got like, like the sections of the orchestra that he snatched right. them from. Oh, that's because that's on the inside idea. he got to be warm. Yeah, right. So on the in, so on the outside it's like people who he's coming to contact with, who mm-hmm. he snatches at edges like like us, you mm-hmm. know, like regular folk. And then he got pe- the sections of the orchestra like these are violin edges. Right. These are euphonium edges mm-hmm. when playing like. You know, peaceful euphonium. So it's a little section. Yeah, just little yeah. ones. Yeah. Little one. You know, he got he got percussion section, and then God bless the violas in the seconds who he right in front of. <sighs> well, Dang. that's most of the coat. Who <laughs> <laughs> Chile? I just can't handle it. Wow. I don't know how long this podcast is gonna last. I mean, I can only because after my edge, after all my hair is gone, then what else? You gonna I mean, start taking my skin too? I mean, there's wigs though. Hope it's not lost. I need some cute wigs too. Yeah. And you ain't you don't have to color the weft. You don't have to not the weft, but you don't have to like put concealer mm-hmm. on the part mm-hmm. on the wig because 
it'll just be skin yeah, underneath. Right. So you don't have to worry about making it look like flesh. Yeah. It'll just be flesh. Yeah, it will. So you don't have to worry about putting concealer on the part. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. You don't have to skip a step. Mm-hmm. And also when you glue down the wig, mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about, you know how you're supposed to put the glue in front of your edges so right. that you don't rip them out. Yeah. You have nothing to rip out. So that's you true. can put the glue wherever. wherever. Really? Yeah. So. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, Thanks for being black and excellent. So, oh, okay, y'all. So the piece of the week. Um, I forgot about this segment. Delaney. Thanks for listening to Class of Black <laughs> Podcast this anyway, week. Anyway, the piece of the we week. We'll see piece y'all of the week. next week. The piece of the week this week is one of Delaney's favorites pieces. Y'all can clearly tell that's not that's not true. It's not. It's unfortunate. It actually hurts my heart because I love this piece. It's Down Zone number two by arturo marquez and this piece is so lit i mean i i did some research a couple weeks ago on <clears throat> el sistema so of course the video pops up with gustavo dudamel conducting the boulevard orchestra of Venez- of caracas venezuela and they're in their venezuela jackets and they play this piece and it's so lit the energy is ridiculous and it's like this piece is so good and I just, I'm just so disappointed. Da, da, all right, so da, da, let me just. Cl- all right, da, 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 we don't need to hear it. We know it. We know it. And you got the in the back. So let me just clarify why I don't yeah, like this. Piece. You don't just not like it. Yeah, I didn't start off this way. So I was in an El Sistema inspired program run by Gustavo Dudamel. Um, who you know he was conducting the boulevards and you know that like we just we played Dance on Number Two so much and for so long. I played this piece twice a week, which. To That's understand, crazy. my orchestra rehearsals on Wednesdays were two hours. I was there for seven hours on Saturdays. I played this piece twice a week, probably for like four years straight. I cannot stand to hear it. <laughs> I cannot stand to hear it anymore. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. And that's not to say like because it, at one point you know I was like okay that's not number two. Like now I just yeah. I can't do it. It's like when you when you eat something too much and you can't yeah. have it no more. Like I just can't do it no more. And you know Arturo I'm like this got some other lit pieces. Um, um, uh, we played Conca del Fuego Nuevo that that joint goes i played another piece by him he actually conducted it mm-hmm. when i was when i was in mexico um i met him i should have been like what that dance on man put it away could you imagine could you imagine <laughs> she was like one of his more i don't know if it's more most successful as well known but mm. but like yeah you know there was a point in time when i did not feel this way but yeah it was literally man, I beaten into my brain so. i freaking love this piece oh my goodness i can't do it no oh more. it's so good but anyway, thank you for listening to Classically Black Podcast. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Classically Black Podcast. If you have intermission suggestions, black excellence suggestions, email them to us at Classically Black Podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> and we will talk to you next week. All right. Bye, y'all. Arriba Darchi. A bientôt. Oh, my goodness. A tutelar. Bye, y'all.